what makes you you? What makes me me? Yeah, like what makes Ooh. you different and unique? What makes me different and unique? Uh, I think what makes us or as, or Louisiana Bistro, our restaurant, different and unique is that we're completely working out of the back of our pockets and off the cuff. Um, we rarely preset anything on our menu, and our menu is completely generated based on what comes in the door from our purveyors on any given day, like you just saw. Guy shows up, hey, I've got 10 pounds of really beautiful shrimp. I take a look at it, yeah, that's really beautiful shrimp. Guess what's our special tonight, shrimp? Shrimp creole tonight, you know? Before that, it would have probably would have been something with lamb because I got some really nice lamb in today too, but now it's going to be shrimp creole. So we're a completely um, ingredients-driven restaurant, which is something that a lot of restaurants claim but if you go in and you look at the menu and then you look at the menu a week from now and then you look at the menu a week from after that, it's the same damn menu. So they're ingredient driven as far as like local ingredients and what's available. Ours is driven day by day by what comes in the door and what's cool and fresh. What or who would you say inspires you? The people around me in the French Quarter. I mean, this is the New Orleans French Quarter. It's a freak show every time you look around. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I like about it because I'm a voyeur. Not a voyeur in the sexual sense, and hey, I want to watch people getting it on and kind of stuff. But uh, you know, New Orleans is a place where you can either be a participant or you can just watch the show. And I like to watch a show. I like to stay on the sidelines. I'm I'm kind of like you. I'm a photographer, so I like to go out and take pictures. I want to go and I want to see what's happening. And sometimes I, of course, participate as well. Mardi Gras, Jazz Fest, that kind of thing. But for the most part, I just like watching the show that's completely around me every day. I mean. This town is, uh, is is a really goofy movie on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things I love about it. There's nothing that's regular in this town. There's nothing that happens on that's just normal, in the sense that every in the rest of the world, day by day by day, it, it can be the same thing, the same thing. And a lot of people like it that way. I don't. I like the variety. I like that no matter you know what happens, I can turn around and I can see something completely different on a regular basis. Okay, okay. The abnormal is the normal here, and that's what I like about New Orleans. One of my favorite old school New Orleans musicians is a guy by the name of Danny Barker, mm -hmm. who is relatively unknown outside of New Orleans, but around New Orleans he's greatly revered. He played with all of the greats. He was a musician who played with everybody. And he himself only, as far as I know, produced two recordings. To one album and one CD later, right before he died, and it was of new, traditional New Orleans music, but it has such a cool and interesting take on it. But when you listen to Danny Barker speak, you better have two hours to go, because there would be a, an awful lot to say. But it would, he had that kind of like slow New Orleans. Well, you know, in New Orleans there are day people and there are night people. The day people are the people that work the nine to five jobs. The night people. They're all the rest of us. There are those of us who go to work at 5 p.m., who work in the clubs, who work in the restaurants, who work in the bands that play out on the street. Day people expect to be ripped off by night people. You have to tip the bartender. You have to tip the bellhop. You have to, and that's the way the economy works. The day people go out and make the real money, and then they hand their money off to the night people. It's just a great look them up. Uh, they're, actually, that quote, that little interview with him is about 12 minutes long but it really should be three minutes <laughs> it, it's on YouTube and it's just okay. funny 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 to listen to him he was just a great guy and it was a really sad thing when he died but of course he was in his late 80s and so he he lived the New Orleans life that's one of those guys who just lived the New Orleans life to its fullest from the beginning to end and one of the guys that you were talking about people that admire and he's one of the people that I admire is there anything you have to say, like specifically about New Orleans? Any other than like the goofiness and? Come join us. It's fun. Okay. I mean, the, um, New Orleans. I mean, New Orleans is such a unique blend, not only within the United States, but I think in the world, as far as different cultures, different types of people. I mean, I'm an immigrant myself. I'm not a native New Orleanian, but at the same time. I've been here for almost 15 years now, and I'm kind of just starting to feel like I'm in New Orleans, you know. 
Accor according to the people who actually have been born and raised here and have been here for generations and generations, my grandkids will finally be considered New Orleanians, but I, I'm at this point considering myself, you know, at least a New Orleans resident, if not a New Orleanian. Would you say you have any special ties to New Orleans? Outside of loving the city, no. I mean, not special ties as in family or anything along those lines. I was born in Austria, raised in Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, I first came to the United States when I was a sophomore in college, or first came to New Orleans when I was a sophomore in college on kind of like a weekend uh, road trip with a bunch of friends, and ever, ever since then, that was in 1986, ever since then, every time I could string together two or three days off in a row, I would come to New Orleans. It's just a fun place to be. And it's a completely different place to be when you're a resident as, as compared to when you're a visitor, and both of them you have to what you do today. Happenstance and alcohol. <laughs> I mean, I, I was a photojournalist for 10 years, and I was always an avid home cook. And so when it came time for me to leave photojournalism, I kind of flipped flop my career and turned my career into my hobby and my hobby into my career. And when I, after I graduated from culinary school, there was no place food-wise, um, people-wise, or living conditions-wise, where I wanted to be, except for New Orleans. Um, New Orleans is as close as you can get to still being in the continental United States and feel like you're not in the continental United States. There's a great quote about New Orleans itself that I love, and that's that New Orleans may be the worst administered city in the United States, but it's the best administered city in the Caribbean. And I always love that quote, because it really makes sense. It's it's almost like living in the Caribbean, but it's not really like living in the Caribbean. It's almost like living in France, but not really like living in France. It's almost like living in Spain, but not really like living in Spain. It's its own melding of all of those things together, and that's one of the things that really makes you New Orleans, New Orleans. But New Orleans is one of those cities where you can, lay, you can kind of lean back and you can just kind of take it easy and still make it good living or you can run the rat race with everybody else like the rest of the country does and make a great living. Um, it's easy to stand out and it's easy to blend in because of its, well, strangeness. You need a photojournalist for 10 oh, years. Yeah. And so now one of my favorite things to do is to just grab my camera and just wander around the quarter. And I might go three, four days without actually shooting a frame. And then I might go two days where I fill every card that I have on, on hand and I'll, I'll make a couple you know thousand images and out of that I'll pull 15 out of it and those I'll keep but at the same time all of these things it's you know, the light the, the, the way people react to other people and, and the, the fact that this town is just so completely not uptight mm -hmm. you know it's it's a live and let live community to its true extent and that's one of the things, um, you know, the people down the street get, are, you know, having a complete blowout fest and the people down over here are just kind of sitting on their stoop and watching the world go by. And that's New Orleans, you know. New, it, and that's what makes New Orleans so hard to define because there are so many versions of New Orleans within itself. Um, and, it, and, that, and that changes block to block, neighborhood to neighborhood. And, and I think the French Quarter is a great example of that. I mean, one of the things I love to say about Bourbon Street is I love Bourbon Street because it keeps all the weird people out of my end of the quarter. But at the same time, they're two blocks away from me. So if I want to go, you know, jump into the, the uniqueness of it and, and go, you know, party on Bourbon Street, I can do that. Or I can go two blocks away and it's quiet and it's like living in a suburb. Mm -hmm. um, or you can go down into the CBD and then for those five, six blocks, it feels like you're in a big city. It feels like you're in Chicago. It feels like you're in Boston. It feels like you're, well, not LA, because LA is big. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but that's just my personal opinion, not to offend anybody from LA. Everybody has their own ideas. Yeah. I mean, New Orleans is New Orleans. And that's the only way to really describe it. I mean, there's, there's the jazz community, there's the blues community, there's the rock and roll community. There's the hip hop community, and it's all and, and the, all of these communities mingle, and they the, the people will live next door to each other. And of course, I'm just talking about music specifically, but then that also includes the arts, and that also includes 
the culinary world, which is incredibly diverse here because New Orleans really is the first American fusion cuisine, for lack of a better phrase. It ta it's ta over generations, they've taken elements from all over the world and melded it into its own unique kind of a thing. And that, be you know, that becomes Creole cooking, and yet at the same time, Creole cooking is so many other versions of cooking, and that's one of the things that makes it a lot of fun. I'm a big brass band fan, so I go out and watch every second line. I go see every, you know, I, the To Be Continued brass band who was playing on Sunday at the Satchmo second line. Mm -hmm. they're, they're probably, uh, to me, they're the best up and coming band that, you know, is just now starting to make its mark in New Orleans. And they're the people that I'm going to be bragging to my friends about. <laughs> you know, I used to see them at a club with maybe me and 15 other people way back when. You know, they're the new, they'll, they'll be rebirth brass band pretty soon. Right now, they're, you know, not even in the United States. They're, they're in Europe touring around. They're w very well known now, and they, they, and they deserve to be. But to be continued brass band is going to be the next one. I'm proud to, like, not been in on the ground floor because I kind of know the guys at this point, but don't really know them. But, you know, the fact that I've, I've watched them start to come up, and now they're really going to hit big, and it's just something to me that's just incredibly fun to watch.